Okay, so here is the brush I made with the different brush presets on shape dynamics, just shape dynamics. And what I like about it is even when it's really layered over itself, it leaves little gaps, but not many gaps, right? The other one I like to use sometimes is called texture. Well, let's just move down them. Under shape dynamics is scattering. And if you do scattering, you can actually make it kind of like an airbrush with a different placement. So what would this look like? Hmm. All right, so under shape dynamics, I can control a lot of things that matter. You know, the size, especially the angle. There's something called roundness, which can kind of taper your edges a little bit, which can be nice, like it has a little bit of wetness at the edge. The minimum diameter, and especially putting it so it's pin pressure sensitive. If you do a huge size jitter, it's gonna look kind of lumpy. So you wanna give it some believable variation, but you don't want it to be just chaotic and uncontrollable as a tool. Now underneath shape dynamics is one I don't use too much, but some of you might find use for it. It's scattering. Scattering allows you to pretty much turn your brush into an airbrush with a much bigger spread. And you can apply the count of it. And it's pretty good for texturing, but I don't tend to use scattering that much. The one I do like a lot is texture and texture is something you can just you can see with the depth you can set like a slight kind of sand pattern texture i like this one from the options this is like a, a texture um setting in layer styles you can upload your own pattern your own texture i like to make it pretty bright actually the opposite i like to take the brightness down so it's just barely there and fairly large in its scale, and then keep it pretty high contrasted, and then you can play with the depth. So I keep the depth pretty low. And this is like giving it a slight paper texture. And then you can even jitter the depth, so it's not always the exact same. So this is very subtle, depending on how much you use it. But you don't want it so much that you can't see your brush coming through, right? So, maybe about that is nice. So what does it look like without texture and with texture? Try to zoom in on a little area and show you. This is with texture. And this is without. So things you can play with. I like it because it makes the, the edges a little bit sharper. And I try to open it up a little bit more. So I kind of like that. Take... So really can make a big change to your brush. And then smoothing I usually have on. It's subtle, but it will help with the blending. Now, what if you wanna change your brush? So this is a good kind of full coverage custom brush. But it's pretty dark. What if I want something that has a lot more opening in it than this? But I love the feathered edges of this brush, so I will use it. Well, I can always go back to my original brush. And I can modify it. Now I can actually paint it with my own brush. So, for instance... Let's do something a little bit more minimal. I'm going to use my own brush here. 
Turn on those shape dynamics. This is for the eraser now. You have to set brush settings for each tool. Make it pressure sensitive. Play with the angle, play with the roundness. And I'm gonna leave a lot more white space in this brush. Okay, now I'm gonna say edit, just to remind you. Define brush preset. I'll call this custom brush two. And then I have to work on the shape dynamics. So the reason I show you this is so you understand there aren't magic brushes you can buy. It's understanding the properties that you can adjust for them towards your purpose. So now let's try this. Oh, I just did it for the eraser. <laughs> let's try it with the paint. Let's use the new one and let's set these dynamics. So that's my old brush. This will be my new one. Really mess with that angle jitter and that roundness jitter and the size jitter. All of that really matters for it to feel and look more natural and less digital. So this is the new one. It has more space in it. And I kind of like that. I can add texture to it, but I have to set that. Yeah, that's pretty nice. All right, so I have two brushes I can use. Now I can save that. That brush, I can keep modifying new brushes, and now I'm onto my refined paint layer. And I'm going to use my custom brush for it. So they're down at the bottom here. Or I can use brushes I made for past semesters. For refined painting, I want to keep it between 100 and 200 pixels. I don't want to let myself get too small and too detailed. And I want to keep my opacity now between 50 and 70. So I'm going to go right in the sweet spot around 60%. And now this is where I can start thinking about what is the finish I would like to have. Just kind of roughly, being confident, being quick. So with this guy, I can kind of see the eye in low resolution there. Now let me steal some colors. and I can start putting in an eyebrow. As a werewolf, I'm gonna do, be doing lots of hair on him. So this goes on top of the underpainting. And now I can start what's called modeling. Showing that eye, showing that the, the pupil touches at the top and the bottom. I have a little rim around it. Again, I'm not zooming in more than I need to. That the whites of the eye actually have some shadows. I'm gonna go even down to, to 50% as I kind of model this. And my custom brush is softer than that round brush. So it's going to blend those edges a little bit better. So when I do a highlight, they'll have softer edges to them. I can even establish a black just somewhere, just so that's there in the pupil. Even if it's just a 60% black. just so that can start to mix with the other colors I use. 
Do some sideburns. And so your refined painting is just a lower opacity, slightly smaller brush, more targeted, more textural. And you can use, go between lots of different brushes now. So now when I start to model the face, I can get some of those in-between tones a little bit better. I'm more aware of the direction of my brush strokes. And this is labor intensive. This is why online these are always speed paintings that don't show you it in real time. Because it's just a lot of mark making. Get the highlight on the top side of his upper lip. On and on. I know he's going to have glasses. So now this is what's kind of fun. It's nice to be informed by this photograph, but I'm not trying to just match this. I'm going to make him into a werewolf, right? So I can find additional source material for that. I have one reference I kind of like already, even though it's just digital coloring. But I like the idea of even just in this refined painting stage, it's changing the shapes a little bit. So I made a realistic eyebrow. Now let me kind of build in the werewolf eyebrow. And you'll see how the texture of the brush really helps you with your work. So this is the underpainting. Looks kind of blobby and flat. Now with your refined brush, you can start to get to a, a pretty uh, textural, you know, believable surface. Right now, my brush kind of looks like pastel, and that's fun. Just for the fun of my process, it might be fun for me to kind of paint him up without the uh, werewolf features and then do the werewolf features on an additional layer. Because in general, with digital painting, using your refined brush, just the more you build, the better. So I'm going to stop it about there. That's going to be my refined paint layer. And then I'm going to do werewolf stuff on a new layer on top of that. But I know there's going to be several steps to making this guy as a werewolf. but I don't want to rely too much on just one reference. I want to get the little divot. I want to make sure that the underside of his nose is pretty prominent, that the shadows are there. It's pretty safe to use red around eyes, no matter the skin tone, no matter the color of the eyes. Red is a great kind of underpainting color to show blood flow. It's a dark, bright color, so it attracts the viewer's eyes around your focal points. Say it again. Yeah, it's a lot bigger. That's why I'm going to start framing it in a little bit. Why is it not doing much? It's like I have something selected somewhere. Huh. There we go. So as you hold down Option to steal colors, you'll see how it will show you what you're choosing. So that's nice. And the only problem with always stealing colors from yourself is it's just going to keep your palette narrower and narrower. So that's why I like to have the palette on the side to throw in some unusual colors sometimes. Even if you're not making a werewolf, it's good to put some blue.